Pow wow, yo, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Hello everyone, this is Pow Wow 41 and we have had some little, uh, a little situation with the export of this Pow Wow. So I'm going to be doing it live right here for you because we have very important information and content to go through. So without further ado, my name is Benji and I'm going to be serving you today. Now let's get right into it with today's content. We're going to be talking a lot about the Borg migration. This is something that a lot of us are looking forward to. And the price of CHSB has been reflecting that Borg migration. Uh, we've seen the hype, we've seen the excitement, and we're sharing it with all of you. But we'll also be talking about the hero score because we've been updating it and you might have noticed some changes. We've seen a lot of questions about that as well. So without further ado, let's dive right into the next slide. Question of the week. Is there still a question of the week? Yes. I would really like to hear some arguments why Cardano and BNB are not part of the best blockchain thematics. What factor made them fall out of the tops? Well, I've put together a little bit of content on that next slide to answer your question. First off, for Cardano, it's quite easy to understand. It just didn't make the cut compared to the others that were on its featured layer. We took the technical dimensions, ecosystem vitality, top 100, quantitative score, progress score, and partnership potential, and Cardano just wasn't as good as the others it was up against. For the Binance Smart Chain, it's a little bit more complicated. The thing is that the BSC is more of an ecosystem. It doesn't really just track a blockchain. It tracks the whole Binance um, progress and the whole Binance endeavors. So it's not really a fair measure, and that's why it was out of this particular thematic. It's just because it's not really comparable to the others. It doesn't make it less interesting or less good. It just makes it different in a good way. All of the details are featured in the best blockchain thematic article that is here um, on our blog. So feel free to check it out if you have any doubts or if you want to know more about why a particular blockchain was selected and its strong suits, at least according to us. News of the week. The first one is pretty good. It's pretty optimistic. The data suggests that the market typically recover quickly from wars and other geopolitical shocks, despite experiencing initial volatility. This was done by a crypto Twitter analyst named Miles, I believe. And what he studied is the crypto's capability of surging back up after a war or a geopolitical event has made it go down. What happens is that when there's uncertainty, people are either afraid or greedy and they will be selling or buying crypto crypto tokens. And this also induces volatility, obviously, and crypto tokens are often more volatile than other assets. So what we're seeing here is volatility and we've seen it in our portfolios as well. But what we're expecting now, or at least from what his study suggests, we will be seeing our cryptocurrencies stable back or stabilize once uh, the dust settles a little bit. The FCA issues 146 alerts in the first 24 hours of new crypto marketing regime. This is more specifically in the UK. We've seen it even uh, for SwissBorg. We had to adapt some of our services for the UK residents. And clearly some um, crypto companies have not been as agile as we are right now. And so they've been blasting them with alerts that can feature heavy fines and even jail time. So. Anyone that has services that are related to blockchain has to be very careful for what they do. And otherwise, at least in the UK, otherwise they're going to get punished. Fortunately at SwissBorg, we're doing things the right way and we are not having any problems right now with the FCA. And we're hoping that it's going to stay that way, or at least we're going to make everything in our power to make it stay that way. Third news of the week, Gary Wang says his friend SBF lied in tweet, FD FTX was not fine. I'm guessing this isn't news to many people because we know now that FTX uh, wasn't fine. But uh, this news of the week is here to show that we're definitely going to be seeing some memes from the FTX trial that's happening. It's been going on for two weeks now. We can expect a lot of fun content to go live on Twitter and all other social media in the next few days, at least if you follow the cryptocurrency related channels. Now the market update. This is a little bit tricky to answer, but it's a question that if you understand the theory behind it, you'll become a much better investor. So we'll get into the explanation. The question is, is the bond crash strengthening Bitcoin? I'll make myself bigger here because this is a tricky one to get. So to answer this question, we're going to be looking at three key elements. One is what is scarcity? 
The second one is what is the bonds market? And the third one is how is BTC correlated to the bonds market? Okay, let's go into this slowly. So scarcity is basically rarity. This is super easy to understand. The fewer of something exists, the more valuable it is. Let's take an example. If I have $5 and they're worth five francs, this means that for each dollar that exists, I have one franc that exists as well. If suddenly I double the supply of the dollar and I have $10, but I still have five francs, it's going to mean that each franc is worth more dollars and each dollar is worth fewer francs. Now, this is how market supply acts on price. When you have a finite supply like Bitcoin, there's only 21 million of them, but an infinite supply of dollars, when you move that supply of dollars, it's going to affect the price of Bitcoin. If I have more dollars, Bitcoin is going to be worth more because each dollar is going to be worth less. If you have more of something, it loses its power and the others gain power over it. The bonds market is the way of governments to manipulate the supply of money. So for example, if the US government buys bonds, they are injecting dollars into the market. That means that there are more dollars in the market and that each individual dollar loses a little bit of its power. So in theory, when the US government sells, uh, buys a lot of bonds, they're putting a lot of dollars in the market. And that means that Bitcoin is getting more powerful because the dollar is getting less powerful. The end is supposed to happen as well. When the US government sells a lot of bonds, then that means that they are taking money out of the market and that makes the dollar more powerful and Bitcoin less powerful. So this is how it's supposed to work in theory. But in practice, historically, it hasn't really been that way. It's been actually the opposite. When governments were buying bonds, therefore injecting money in the money supply, Bitcoin's price would go up. And then when the governments would sell bonds, Bitcoin's price would go down. This is because, I, <laughs> I see a comment, yes. This is because um, people or investors assume that when there is more money going around, people will buy Bitcoin and other assets because they have more disposable income. However, in this graph, we're seeing that this theory is no longer proven to be true and Bitcoin is actually reacting in the good theoretical way as a storage of value, which is exactly the Bitcoin narrative, which is what Bitcoin wants to become. So this is where it gets interesting. We have a Bitcoin that wasn't really following the rules of economics and now it is. And it's very good news because that's exactly what they want to be. And every project wants to get to the place they want to be. So that's it for this uh, chart of the week. If you didn't uh, get it, it's quite important to understand. So don't, so yeah, feel free to rewind and to re-listen. Um, and if that doesn't help, I'm, I'm afraid it's a little bit complicated. So um, you can always DM me and I'll explain it uh, in other words or in French if you want it. Now we have another market update, which is the rise of base. First off, it's pretty good because we're seeing that layer two solutions are increasing in popularity. They're actually representing 61% of transactions in Q3. This is great news for all of the layer two solutions out there. But one, which is the little green one here, is very interesting because it's actually surging in popularity as well. You can see that it came out of nowhere and is now with a almost 20% market share, which is enormous. And this is actually BASE, which is Coinbase's new blockchain. It's basically popular because it's the first blockchain that's issued by a fully listed and regulated company, which is uh, Coinbase, obviously. So it's super nice to see that regulated companies can drive a lot of traction and a lot of momentum. And as we're being regulated and acting in the same way Coinbase is with regulators. We're really hoping that we will see that same popularity. And so far, it's been pretty good for the CHSB to be Borg token. Next slide is the next community events. This is for the French speaking Borgers out there. Tomorrow at half past 6 p.m. there is a meetup at Fribourg with Cryptophil. So feel free to go there and meet up with other fellow Borgers if you're available and not too far from Fribourg. But if you are very far away from Fribourg but still speak French, There'll be a smart cafe at 8 p.m. on Thursday. This will discuss a lot of Swissborg related topics. So if you want to make sure not to miss anything, join them Thursday on Discord. Next slide is the community member of the week. Um, so Andy Sudan, you got this. Uh, congrats to you for being able to generate so many memes. 
with people confusing Louis and me. So Louis is Xbox CEO, I'm sure most of you know, and I'm, well, I'm me, Benji, and I've made a tweet saying that we looked slightly alike and in the office, sometimes people confuse us. Andy has taken that tweet to the next level and filled up my feed with Louis pictures. It made a lot of people inside of the company laugh and it made Danny laugh so much he decided to build this slide for me to present tonight. So congrats to you, let the meme live on and uh, thank you for your interactions. It's been a very, very fun time for me. Referral bounties of the week. So referral bounties, if anyone forgot, is um, jobs that we're looking to fill up. And if you know someone that's competent or that seems to you could fill up one of these positions and is recruited, we'll give you some CHSB to compensate you for your efforts. The two jobs that we're looking for right now is legal counsel, regulatory compliance, it's a remote job, and IT security manager. So if you know people that could be a good fit for these jobs or for these roles, feel free to poke them and tell them to look at our website and apply because we would love to interview them. Announcement of the week. CHSB is transforming in Borg. Now, this is something that the whole company, but also the whole community has been waiting for. It's a major step forward into bringing new utilities to the CHSB token and into bringing a new momentum and hype on our beloved ecosystem. But we have some important news and we need to keep you informed of what's going to happen. We'll have three main steps for the Borg migration. On the 13th, so this Friday, you'll start seeing little banners, story and informative and educative content about the Borg migration and what's going to be happening. This is very important because on the 17th is when everything starts. And this also means that everything that is related to CHSB will be frozen. You will not be able to auto invest. You will not be able to trade thematics. You will not be able to smart send to deposit, to withdraw or to exchange. Everything that has CHSB in it will be frozen except for price alerts, but you won't be able to do anything with CHSB. So if you want to buy CHSB before it goes and transforms into Borg, you need to do that before the 17th. That is your hard deadline. And I would even advise you to do it earlier just in case. And hopefully on the 21st, the trading uh, capabilities of Borg will be reactivated, but this isn't a set in stone date. It can still be a little bit before or a little bit afterwards. So keep in mind that for five days, at least, it's going to be everything frozen and you won't be able to trade your CHSB and or Borg tokens. Another announcement of the week is the new earned strategy on Ethereum. It is of 3.4% expected APY, and it's going to be going live tomorrow at 2 p.m. CEST. So that is Wednesday 11th at 2 p.m. CEST. We're super excited to bring once again a new strategy on Ethereum. We know it's a super popular token for earn, and so now you have one more option. Um, there's a 10-day 10, 10 cooldown and no lockup period, so you'll be able to just enter your Ethereum into that strategy. It's staking, so it's relatively safe. You'll be able to read the risk report ASAP if you want to, but we're really happy to be bringing it tomorrow into the app. Next slide is about a must watch interview. This is Cyrus Fazel's interview with the Crypto Daily. I've watched the whole thing and loved that interview. It was super dynamic. It was super nice to watch. I did put it at 1.25 speed. It was still understandable and very enjoyable. It's however in French. So for the English speakers here, Crypto Meteo did a little recap of some of the alpha and we're going to go through it quickly. We can see here that Cyrus has announced dollar was coming into the app soon for trading. We, we can get ready for a decentralized exchange like Uniswap to be integrated into the smart engine. A new tool similar to the Swissborg challenge is in the horizon. The Borg is going multi-chain, opening doors to other layer one blockchains. A fun fact is that the Borg means castle in Swedish, and we shouldn't miss the upcoming alpha seed phrase, which might be Kreta World. Now, in full transparency, there are some of the news here that I wasn't made aware of, but at the very end of the interview, there is also something that's interesting. Cyrus does mention a desktop version of the app being, um, being worked on right now, uh, and hopefully being live. We don't know when, it's obviously a soon TM, but if you watch the interview, you'll be able to hear it from his own words. That was highlighted by community today on X. Um, and I didn't know about it and I'm super pumped about it as well. 
Social media update. We can see that at least on Twitter, there is a total net audience growth of more than 160%. This is an amazing number. We're super happy and super thrilled to be seeing all of you guys interacting with our brand so much. Um, it's very nice to see. And I was wondering, do you think it's because our content is just amazing or because maybe crypto and blockchains are rallying back up and the momentum is coming back? What do you think? Is it because our posts are great or because crypto is coming back? I don't know. And um, I'm thrilled to see what you're going to be expecting from this. Now, updates. Here is the details for the hero score and how you'll be able to grind those points to be at the top of the leaderboard. First off, we're going to be answering the question, why did my hero score change? This is a question we've seen a lot on social media, and I'm going to clear the air right now saying that to comply with regulatory requirements, one of the sacrifices that we've had to make is um, take all of the UK residents' participation to the hero score away. Unfortunately, the hero score is not, well, it is compliant, but it's not in the way that we want to. We want to stay on the safe side, and therefore, uh, all UK residents and citizens are not able to participate in the hero score any longer, which means that if you are a UK resident, you won't have a score anymore and you've been downgraded into um, ranking, obviously. And if you are a, um, if you are not a UK resident, if you're in other places in Europe, you've gone up in the ranking because you've taken the place of the people that aren't eligible to the hero score program any longer. This is where the changes came from, but also we're integrating a new season of the hero score and we're going to go through all of the points this time. So, just as a friendly reminder, Ivan stepped in the powwow a few weeks ago to talk about the philosophy behind the uh, hero score and how we were reshaping it. What we want to do is to strengthen the Swissborg ecosystem by rewarding active and loyal community members. This is by using the Swissborg services mostly. So the hero score is comprised of buying and holding, AUM. It's going to be actively using the product and it's also going to be loyalty. I know that this is something that a lot of you are um, passionate about and we will be rewarding loyalty and let's get into the details right now. So what's going to be happening, the solutions for the hero score is that we'll have an invite only private discord channel with the top heroes just to talk about ideation all the way through signing a deal uh, for the alpha opportunities, for example, and they will have direct contact with the Swissborg team. So this is for the top hero score and it's uh, just a little thank you for being at the top of the game. With the exception of UK users, Every user, regardless of registration, will automatically be included in the heroes. You won't need to sign up. You won't need to uh, enter any forms or put your ID anywhere. It's just going to be automatic now. And that's just an easier way for people to play if they want to. And if they don't, well, it doesn't matter. You'll never lose anything for not being at the top of the hero score. All that will happen is that you won't gain, which is not a huge sacrifice if you don't mind. We're also introducing a new hero score component that's based on the total AUM that the user holds into the app. Now let's get into the points. Very quickly, you'll be able to pause this and go back through it if you want to read everything in details or take screenshots, but let's go just over the theoreticals. We're going to be looking at the CHSB balance. So how much CHSB you're holding in total in the Swissborg app, but also the net flow, which is how much CHSB you're adding into your CHSB position. And we're looking at the premium tier. If you're a higher premium, you get more points to start off with. And then with the other services, you'll notice a pattern. Earn has been merged with Alpha Opportunities and is also looking at AUM and NetFlow. So what we really are looking for is how much do you have right now and how much are you adding into the hero score or at least into your positions. This is also the case for thematics. And then one page that changes a little bit more that might be a little bit unfamiliar compared to the others is the total app balance, weekly top up, Swissborg lifetime, and time as premium points. So we're going to be rewarding also our heroes for the total AUM that they have in the app, for how much they're adding into the app in general, and for their lifetime loyalty. So we're finally rewarding loyalty. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. This is one way we're going to be doing it. And it's just a little show of appreciation for those that have been staying a long time with Swissborg without, without making the game less fun for all of the others that are joining today, because that would be uh, a pretty harsh opportunity cost. Now let's look at the chart of the week. 
The chart of the week is fascinating to me. It's just showing how much CHSB's popularity has surged in the last week or so. We can see that it's almost triple in number of transaction and the favorite deal day has seen a magnificent 6,000 transactions in a day, which is enormous. Unfortunately, starting next week, we will destroy this chart because we will freeze all CHSB exchanges and transactions, but uh, it's for the good cause. And I just wanted to show that chart to show you uh, how much our CHSB is thriving and hopefully it will stay that way. CHSB weekly data, we have 44,352 premium members. This is plus 322, which is great news. 22% is staked, plus 12.5% in the weekly price change. A lot of you are super happy about it, and so am I, obviously. The Guardian spot isn't changing too much, and we have more than 150,000 holders of CHSB in the app, and we're going to actively work to bring that number up. Now, the community index. Let's play a little game. If someone gets it right here before I reveal it, I'll give them 50 CHSB. All right, so cast your votes. Guess now. I want to see these comments go, and I'll highlight if anyone gets it right. 50 CHSB are on the line. I hope that you're excited. 4.5, 5.5. We're a little bit, a little bit on the safe side here. 4.5 as well. And the magic number is 4.4. So congratulations to Maestralius. You have won 50 CHSB. Contact me on Discord. You can find me easily. I will make sure that you receive them ASAP. Congrats. Um, this is because although CHSB social, CHSB holders and invitations are up, we've had such a good week with favor that the volume and app activity has gone down a little bit. But to be fair, it's a good problem to have. It's just because we had such an incomparable week uh, with our favor alpha deal. So these two metrics are bringing the community score down a little bit, but overall, it's pretty good to see everything else up. And definitely, we're hoping it to be up next time as well. This is it for this power number 41. Uh, Cyrus will be back next week with a lot of news. They'll be He'll be talking about some of the alpha that he said in the interview that I was highlighting before, but also obviously talk about the CHSB into Borg migration, which means a lot to him and the company. Um, I hope that I was half as entertaining as he is and that you've been able to gather some information from this powwow. It wasn't too fast, but yeah, feel free to watch it back and remember, stay healthy, stay wealthy and love our CHSB and our equity. Thank you everyone.